welcome to Gilboy's YouTube channel. In this video, I want to demonstrate how our polishes can sometimes restore the colour on sun faded furniture. Uh, something that we get questions about all the time via email, and I think it's about time we addressed it uh, in an in depth video, really. As you can see, holding in my hands right here is a piece of wood. It's a drawer front, it's made from I think it's walnut actually, it's satin walnut that's faded a little bit and as you can see I've already waxed it with our rose gold polish just to give it a bit of warmth. Um, I'm now going to demonstrate how I've done this and there is actually on our website a help and advice section where you can see pictures and a more written description but for this I'll demonstrate on the, another section of this drawer face uh, and I'll put up some masking tape down let's just do it because I'm talking about it. Okay, so I want to demonstrate uh, the antique gold on here, which is a slightly different colour to the rose gold. The rose gold's got a brown mahogany nutty sort of colour that goes um, with our polishes. And this side I'm going to demonstrate the antique gold, which is more of a darker oak sort of colour to it. Just so it happens, there we are. Now I'm going to apply it with some 4-0 oil-free wire wool. We've been using this in the workshop, well I've used it ever since I started French polishing and furniture restoration. It's brilliant for applying wax polishes to surfaces. So it's as soft as cotton wool. It really is incredibly soft to the touch and it's wonderful for applying waxes. So I'm not going to clean this drawer face. I'm just going to charge some wax onto, onto the wire wall. And I'm not going to dab. I don't want to dab it on because that might make stains over the surface. I'm just going to apply it straight to the wood. Now I already know that this is going to work well because this is a dry piece of timber. Really I'm demonstrating the two different ones just so you've got an idea of the colours, really. So I applied that in the direction of the grain, took off any excess. Uh, just missed a little tiny bit there. Just see. <laughs> I'll leave that now for about 20, 30 minutes and we'll come back and buff it. Remove the mask and tape and you'll see the difference between the two. Now, using wax polishes to enhance or to try and revive sun faded furniture it's nothing really new really we've done it a number of times in here in the past but it doesn't always work it very very much depends on the type of finish that the wax polish is being applied to it's really important to sort of to understand that because certain finishes that are dry that are being exposed to the sun in the environment will be really readily absorbent for the wax polish but if you've got something where it's been um, sun faded but the finish is still in good order it's still in good tact intact then the wax will not be able to penetrate through that finish and be absorbed by the wood or the finish itself in which case it doesn't work very well now that's not the problem of the wax it's just the situation of the, that piece of furniture and your only option really is to either live with it or you strip it and refinish it so the best bet really is to give the wax polish a go. If it works, you save yourself a whole heap of money. Otherwise, you're stripping and refinishing. But like I say, it doesn't work every time. Excuse me, it doesn't work every time. 
Um, antiques, faded antiques and period furniture, much better. More modern furniture, like floors, or sometimes I hear it on some people with speakers, stereo speakers and things like that. If it's got a polyurethane or a high gloss finish, unlikely our wax polish will work as effectively as you may hope it will. But give it a go. All right, let's, let's move on. Um, this is drying still. Um, oh, there's another example. Look, I did this one as well. I photographed this on our website. This is a uh, beach. This is off of a Windsor chair, a farmhouse Windsor chair. I did exactly the same, masking tape, rose gold, buffed it. And look at that. Uh, it's just wonderful. I say you could use the antique gold on that or rose, the rose being more brown, mahogany sort of colour, nutty colour, and the antique with a darker colour. Right, let's choose another piece of wood to demonstrate this on. Right, that's a... Okay. This is another draw face. Uh, looks like a Regency period one. It had some oval plate handles on there, press plate handles. It's mahogany on a pine substrate so it's just veneered mahogany nothing wrong with veneers we love veneered furniture all the best antiques in the world are veneered um this is really can you hear that it's really dry uh, i think this has also been overcoated with something by looking at it here it's in a bit of a state so it's been refinished at some point it's got moisture damage and it's got all sorts going on there i'm going to do the same drop some masking tape down there and i'm going to give it a go with antique gold on here as well i don't know what's going to happen we'll have a look So I'm going to do the same process on a number of pieces of uh, furniture. I say furniture again, it's just broken bits we use for restoration. Right, so here's, here's quite an interesting piece. This is, I think this is probably actually early 20th century. It's worn up, covered in dust and can't really see. There is a finish underneath it, but it has bubbled and lifted off. The veneer's lifting here. But I'll, again, masking tape, I'll do this side because I don't want the uh, wire wall to catch this loose veneer. And we'll see what happens on this one as well. I think I'll probably use, uh, I'll use the rose gold on this, see how that affects that. Another draw face, we've got some draw faces in our, in our storeroom, in our container. This is a, a really nice piece of oak. Again, it's not veneer, this is solid. I think this has been left outside, um, possibly for a good while actually, because it's really water stained. You can see where the old handles were there's run marks going down through it. So I'm not sure what to expect when we put the antique gold definitely on this one, I think, uh, to see if we can revive it. Again, 
Don't dab the surface, apply it to it straight. Now that's quite absorbent, it's sucking the wax in because it's drying it off of the off the wire wool. I'm going to have to keep on charging the wire wool because it's just sucking the wax from the wire wool, which is a good sign. Okay, so that's the last piece. That's enough there for a range of, of finishes and different states of disrepair. Uh, won't be too long actually. I should be able to go back to that first satin walnut draw face and buff it. Let's uh, give it another 10, minute, 10 minutes or so and we'll come back and buff that. Okay, so this one's ready for buffing and I've always used pure cotton buffing cloth or this stockinette. It's not lint free, but it is superb for buffing beeswax polishes. It's got a lovely open weave and that open weave helps keep the surface cool when you're buffing the wax to a sheen. You're not buffing the wax off, you're buffing the wax on the surface. You're in effect flattening all those wax cells which are all at different angles at the moment and when the buffing action you are warming them up ever so gently and smoothing them down flattening them to the surface by buffing them all in the same direction uh, hence allowing the light in and getting the sheen now let's see what happens with this piece of satin wood there's the rose gold this is the antique gold i'll stop talking gold rose gold this has got more of a, a darker greeny hue to it and this one has more of a nutty warm brown sort of walnutty color I suppose um, you can see what it's doing is just enhancing the natural color of the timber beneath it refreshing the the, the surface is polished that's on here that's dry and reviving it giving a lovely sheen now if you wanted to and you wanted a bit more of a sheen to it, add more protection, you can over polish this with our pure gold, which is a clear colorless polish, which you go over the top, but give it a week or so. Don't do it straight away. Let this polish harden a little bit. Let it go hard and dry into the surface and then wax polish it with the pure over the top. But you can see how effective that has been on there. It's, it's pretty good and that saves you having to strip and refinish. Like I say, it doesn't happen every time, but give it a go. Right, let's try the other pieces. It's dry and mess around with. Let's buff it and see what we've got.
made some sort of difference there. It's not quite as transformative as the, the walnut piece, but it's gone in some way to satisfy the absorption of the wood. Like I said previously, it, it has got a finish underneath there that's a, an overbrush of something like shellac has been slapped on it. But it has made a difference. Let's take off. Maybe that gives you a better idea. If I angle it a bit like that, maybe you can see. But it's added a little bit of colour into it and it's revived the finish. Right. Let's move on to the next piece. This is the walnut one. So it's got a figured walnut veneer over mahogany and well, it's a walnut back actually that is walnut substrate the actual walnut there so it's got walnut with a walnut veneer over the face of it penultimate one this is a great big lump of oak that was really quite absorbent wasn't it let's see what this turns out like this really does need refinishing but let's see what the wax did afraid of using Gilboy's Gold polishes to try and revive your sun damaged furniture. Let's face it, what's the alternative? Stripping and refinishing, which is going to be very time consuming and costly. Or you get a French polisher into your home to try and do it. But either way, if somebody's coming into your home to do it, they're going to have to over polish what exists. So stripping is the only option. Buying a tin or a jar of our polish is going to be a lot cheaper. Now, I'm not saying, having said this, that our polish was ever intended to be a reviver for some bleached furniture or some bleached wood. That was never our, our intention. It was a happy accident. As actually you can see in one of our very early videos, if you take a look at this video, um, in it you can see me polishing a Georgian cellaret, which, by accident, when we, I was waxing it, I thought I was just going to give it a go. And it, amazingly, the colour came flooding back. And that's really indicative of what happens when you're applying our polishes to some faded antique furniture. Modern furniture, or modern finishes, should I say, not so much because they're hard and quite impervious. And they need to allow the colour to come out of the wax and go into the finish and then maybe going into the wood itself. But reviving it and let the light back in. But give it a go, what can you lose? Um, if you don't like what you've seen or don't like what the effect has had on your furniture, you can always wipe it off. And you can wipe it off with a little bit of white spirit or pure turpentine. Don't use methylated spirits, you know, the blue colored methylated spirits, that would, can dissolve finishes, or cellulose. White spirit's the one, you just wipe it off and it will uh, just take off the wax and you'll be left with the original finish that's there. It should be unharmed. Um, it should be absolutely fine. But give it a go, what can you lose? Right, let's go back to buffing, buffing this draw face. Okay, so this piece here, actually probably could have done with a clean first to get rid of some, so I think it's fly poo and, bits of paint and dirt that probably needed a, a, a clean first. And actually this one would have worked really well with an oil stain revive, which is in one of our other videos where I use an oil stain to revive a smoker's bow chair. 
if I'd done the same to this, then weighted it, then wax, I think the transformation would be even greater. But this was just me picking a piece of, uh, of wood out of our container and just applying wax to them. But that, again, is pretty good, really. Just for a single application of wax. Not just any old wax, it's our wax, it's Gilboy's wax. I can't get uh, any more wax in our wax, if you know what I mean. There is stuff full of premium waxes, hence why it works so well. I think that's brilliant. Right, last piece. Get rid of some of the chair. Rose gold, antique gold. That's buff. <laughs> sort of it's giving it a more natural colour than the rose gold really but to be honest if you were to wax the entire chair you wouldn't know the difference you really wouldn't um, it just helps emphasize and brings the colour of the wood and the finish together I think either one rose or antique is going to work really well and I think that you'll find that in the majority of cases I think just to, to emphasize what the antique gold can do on a complete piece of furniture. Let me just grab a, this chair. So this is a smoker's bow rescued from my next door neighbor's garden in about 19, 1990, 1991. So a few years ago, my parents next door neighbor's garden, it was going to be used as the lighting sticks for their bonfire on November the 5th, Guy Fawkes. And I rescued it, restored it. You can see the little repairs that I've made. This is a new spindle here that I replaced how many years ago that now is. And a repair at the top here. But it's been polished with our antique gold to give it this lovely golden look. So, in conclusion, what we've done here, I've just demonstrated how using Gilboy's polishes, the rose and antique gold, can in some, go in some way to restoring the finish and the colour on faded and tired pieces of furniture. But it doesn't necessarily happen every time. But surely it's worth giving it a go rather than just sort of condemning it and saying, I'm going to strip it because you never know, you might get uh, a finish like we've got here, that sort of thing, for just one application. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And once you've done that, hit the bell notification icon, and that way you'll be notified every time we upload a new video to YouTube. Uh, failing that, also go to www.gilboys. Who says www? I keep on saying that when I'm on the camera. Go to gilboys.co.uk where you'll find lots more information about wax polishing and help and advice section on um, finishing in general. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.